Yay, school counselors! I feel like I can do that because I've worked with so many school counselors and you guys are awesome people. <laughs> like really awesome, awesome people. I don't know how you do your job. There should be at least 13 of you for every person there is at a school because let's be very realistic. Our lives, our kids' lives outside of school are so different than they were five years ago, 10 years ago, two years ago. I mean, you know so much about these kids and your compassion and dedication and commitment to them is just timeless. And I I know you have plenty of stories of how our kids have overcome great obstacles and your involvement um, that you have done to help them. And I'm hoping that you will love the social emotional learning notebook program. Like I, it's my child. I love it so much. I've implemented it with literally over a thousand kids over the past five years, and I have seen great success. Now, here's a little bit of a connection for you. I'm definitely not a school counselor, although I admire you guys very, very much. Um, I did go online and I noticed that there's the American School Counselor Association, and they actually have this list of mindsets and behaviors for student success. And so I'd already written these books, I started the books in 2018, but when I found this list about a year ago, I was like, holy moly, look at, I can't believe these books like match all this stuff. So I'm going to, I think, post it. I don't know which side it is. Wherever there is a space and they're posted, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but these were the seven I came up with. Self-confidence and the ability to succeed. That comes up a whole lot with growth mindset. Like in the chapter one, we talk about the difference between fixed and growth mindset. And they set goals, which goes down a little bit longer with BLS 7 in terms of identifying the goals for short-term academic career and social emotional goals. Like every single chapter, I ask them to kind of, in essence, analyze where in their life do they need to improve on? You know, what relationships do they need to work on? So that whole component is there and that connects also with in terms of belief and using to their fullest, um, their abilities to the fullest to achieve high quality results and outcomes. And I talk about the power of you and that is really the whole goal is to help the kids believe in themselves. I do it through the lens of a growth mindset. It's worked for me for years and that's where this kind of came from. Um, that connects also to having a positive attitude toward work and learning. Obviously, that's growth mindset. Um, applying self-motivation and self-direction to learning. Uh, the last, after you go through all 10 chapters, the last section is for them to come up with an action plan that they can really dive into different topics. Uh, the, t the teen version, it just says action plan, but for the tween and kid versions, I use guiding questions to help them. Um, the SMS six, cause I already talked about seven was demonstrate the ability to overcome barriers to learning. And that again, connects with the growth mindset components and then demonstrate advocacy skills and ability to assert self when necessary. And that's going to come out with the adults chapter specifically, as well as be true to you, which is chapter nine. So I hope as you go through this program, um, and support your colleagues that, you know, you feel that a little bit of load is taken off because, you know, my kids, the ones who really embrace this, like they saw a noticeable change. And I could spend a long time telling you some of their amazing success stories. Okay, I'm going to tell you one. I wasn't going to, but I'm going to tell you one. I had this one student who focused a little bit too much. I can't give you too many details in case this person watches the videos. But let's say she was a little bit too focused on the social life of being a freshman instead of the academic life of being a freshman. And then when COVID hit, this student who was remarkable and brilliant, but just completely distracted and not hardworking to do her best potential, she no longer had the ability to deal with social stuff because she's learning from home. She focused so hard and kept doing her best. And the messages I have from her and remind about growth mindset and how its impact her is amazing. She went through this, I believe, six level interview process in order to go to a college, I'm not going to be specifics, diversity program. And her whole life is different. And her text and messages to me and remind about how just using growth mindset completely changed everything. Like I'm fully confident when she goes back to school, in-person learning, she has had so much growth that she's not going to let the poisonous drama, chapter four that she had in the past impact her in her future. And I mean, you have, I'm sure, hundreds of stories where they haven't. And my hope is that this structured program with lesson plans, essential questions, learning targets can either help you during your advisement sessions or homeroom sessions with your students or however your school's gonna implement them, or that it's just structured and it really takes our kids through all these different areas. And I don't think I mentioned it in this video, but we start off 
fixed and growth mindset, remembering the good story, the positive things that happen in our life. Then chapter three goes into academics. Four deals with poisonous drama and friendship relationships. Chapter five is about technology and having balance with tech. Um, chapter six, I believe, is the team things where we talk about not only sports, but drama or even small groups in the classroom. Chapter seven talks about adults and the bonding abyss and just through how do you get along with not only parents, but adults in general. How do you communicate with them? What's going on? Uh, and then chapter eight, nine, and 10 are really more the self-awareness component of social emotional learning because um, decision making and social awareness, like all of that is built in with the previous ones. But anyway, the last three chapters, chapter eight is discovering who you are, which is, you know, take, sometimes it might be taking a personality test. Sometimes it might be asking someone else, who do you think I am? Chapter nine is being true to you. And just once you know who you are and what you like, like don't change, don't let peer pressure impact you. And then chapter 10 is on belief. And I don't talk about belief in terms of religion or faith. As much as I talk about it is like fundamental beliefs that all of us have, like integrity matters. Forgiveness is important. We are interdependent, those types of things. And so it's a really comprehensive program. And, you know, I... I love it and I know I'm selfish because it's my baby and all of us are going to love our babies, um, but I've seen growth and I've seen incredible growth and um, I just thank you for supporting the school already and I hope that this is not a burden to you, um, but a sense of joy and that you have so many more victories. So thank you so much. This is my longest video, but I had so much to share. So talk soon. Bye.